From the previous tutorial video, we learned that uh, for the excessive method get marks and also the mutated method set marks. They have very similar code structure over here. You can see they got the same uh, for loop header over here. They're the same, exactly the same. And also the get are the same. They have the same uh, if conditional check over here, which will check to see which one is a matching course. So in some way, we are trying to identify which course object to really do something about by its title. So both uh, both methods have the same uh, checking condition for the if. Okay, so now we repeat the same code structure twice, which is not very ideal because you really want to minimize duplicates in your code as much as possible. Okay. So now, uh, before I do anything, let's just see that from the previous uh, uh, tester over here, we set the mark to be 72, 65, and 81. Let me just update that very quickly on my iPad. Okay, 72, 65, 81, okay? So now over here, we have, over here, so for, so that'll be 72, 65, 72, and 65, and, 81. Okay, that's just from the previous one. So we're just updating the notes. So in case you're looking at the notes, you can also see the, the final outcome from the previous one. Okay, but for this particular uh, uh, method, I'm going to use a new diagram over here. Okay, we got 72, we got 65, and also we got 81. Okay, so now I want to show you a way of, it is so-called refactoring your code. I'm going to write it out for you. It's called refactoring. Okay, it's called refactoring. It's a little bit more advanced concept for software engineering, re, uh, refactoring. Refactoring simply means we're going to change the code structure internally, whereas the external behavior of your program does not change, okay? While not modifying external behavior of program change the internal code structure. Okay, that's what refactoring is, okay? Not modifying the external behavior but we're gonna change the internal code structure. Okay, that's what refactoring is. So in our case, we, we realize that even though, if I go there, even though these two methods over here, get marks and also set mark, even though both of them work, but they smell in the sense that they really repeating the same pattern of for loop and if statements over here. So we wanna change that, but we don't wanna change the external behavior for any user who want to use our program, for example, the tester, or any controller later on for your mobile app. In this case, we want to make sure whenever we want to set the marks or we want to get the marks, we should still get the same result, even though the internal structure has been changed. Okay, that's kind of the idea. Okay, so now we want to improve the code structure. So how do we do that? So for this particular uh, scenario, let me just tell you the solution directly. You can try to study the solution a little bit to get some insight. Okay. So this is uh, how we can see it. In both cases, for the set marks and also get marks, we are somehow trying to identify where the matching course record is. So what is a matching course record? A matching course record is really the one that has the title matching the inputs. Okay, let me just give you one more example. Okay, the example from the previous one. So let's, uh, let me use a different color here. So when you say s dot, uh, set marks and also s dot get marks. So both of them are is expecting the first input to be some course name. Of course, for the get uh, for the set marks, you also take the uh, second inputs over here. Okay. So now, in case where it is EECS, for example, twenty thirty, just as an example. In this case, okay. In that case, we are basically going to locate where the record is. In this case, it is exactly this record here 
that has the matching name EECS 1020, uh, 2030. And more precisely, this is the course record that is pointed to by position number one of the uh, ESTA courses, the array. Okay, that's exactly being pointed to by this. Okay, so that means for both methods over here, get marks and get, oh, set marks and get marks, the common step we can implement as a helper method is to identify where the matching course record is, i.e., where the course record with the matching title is. It can be a position zero if the input is EECS 1022. It can be at position one which can, uh, if the input is EECS 2030. Or it can be at position two if the input was EECS 3311. But what if the input was EECS 2011? In which case, it does not exist in the array. So the position would just be some invalid index, let's say minus one because it can, oh, it can never have minus one as a valid index for the array, okay? So now, what we're gonna do is, we're gonna define a helper method to retrieve exactly where the course record with the matching title is. And it's gonna return an integer index, which can be zero, can be one, can be two, or it can be minus one in this case. So it, will, it, will, wouldn't return, it will return all the values from zero until and a uh, number of courses minus one. Okay, it's only the uh, the range is gonna return either zero or one or two, and then it's not going to return NOC because NOC. If you go for courses at position NOC, it's gonna be the null slots because starting from here, you got all the null slots, so it's not, that's not gonna be the return value. Okay, so now let's see how we can do this, and I'll show you some run. Okay, so now let's see this. So now what we'll do is helper method for and then uh, for locating where the course record with a matching title is where it is index which is going to be an integer so we're going to return some integer for this particular accessor method and then we can say index of course and then we simply pass string and title and notice that this input title over here is the same as the title over here. You can see the first input for uh, the method, the, the new method we are defining, the first input is the same as the two previous methods we have. So that means eventually we can call the new method as a helper method. Okay, that's something I will show you in a moment. Okay, index of course. So now what we can do, I'll just show you directly the code. Integer i is assigned to minus one. Let me just say index index where it is and then and then we're gonna say return index eventually so now minus one is simply the case where the title has no matching case in the current uh setup in the uh for example ecs 2011 ecs 2011 has no matching uh course record that has the title with it so in that case that'll be minus one but if there if the uh, course title does exist in one of the course records in that case, we're gonna return the corresponding index, okay? So study this method very carefully. I'm gonna show you the code. I'm gonna say for integer, i is assigned to zero, and then remember, we're gonna say i is less than this dot noc. The same principle applies from the previous video. You should really, again, understand why we are passing this dot noc rather than this dot courses dot length, okay? To avoid null pointer exception, you should really review in the previous video why we're doing this i plus plus and then what we'll do is we can say if you can see we are gonna just do this condition check just once okay let me just even copy that we can say if it is the case that uh the array you can see courses at position i dot title dot equals title if that's the case we'll simply say index is going to be reassigned to the current i okay so now let's just do a very quick run, for example. Let's say, what about if I say index of? Index of course. Let's try EECS 2030. What's gonna happen over here? Okay, if I say index of uh, course EECS 2030, of course, S will be the context objects. In this case, uh, when I is, uh, when the loop counter I is at position zero, in which case 
In which case, you will see that. Oh, let me just go back there. In which case, you will see that courses at position zero dot title, which will be EECS ten twenty two, and it is not matching twenty thirty. So we're gonna uh, we're gonna skip this particular body of the if branch for the first iteration, and then we increment i from zero to one. So now i counter would be one over here. And then it's uh, courses at position i, which will be at position one, will be referring to this course objects over here. And then the title will be EECS twenty thirty. In which in which case we will reassign the index to be i, which is currently one. Okay. And then after that, uh, we don't have to worry because uh, and then after that we'll simply increment i from one to two. In which case we'll actually see that uh, at position two. And now the course title is 3311, which does not match. So we will actually uh, skip this particular body of the loop for in the third iteration. And then since we uh, only go until NOC minus one, so we exit from the loop, okay? So now that's what we have. What about ECS 2011? In the case of ECS 2011, in which case you can see when i is equal to zero, i is equal to one, i is equal to two, the corresponding course record object has no matching title with EECS 2011. So that means we, for all the three iterations, we never got into this particular reassignments for index. So that means index remain to be minus one. Okay, so that's what, what's gonna happen. Okay, so now let's now uh, study this method very carefully because it's a very useful uh, helper method for you to use. Okay, given this, how can we change? How can we, uh, how, how, how about I just uh, do something for you over here? Okay, let's test that, okay? It's out over here, let's say index of EECS 2030. Oh, actually, let me just do all the courses, how about that, okay? index of 1022 1022 and also 2030 3311 and also 2011 okay so now what we can do is plus okay so students s dot index of course eecs 1022 okay let me just copy this part here and then let's modify that accordingly and then this will be EECS 2030. And over here, we also got uh, 3311. So these will return in indices 0, 1, and 2 accordingly. And, but for this one here, 2011, it does not exist, which means it's gonna return minus one. Okay, exactly. So now what we expect to see will be 0, 1, and then 2, and then minus one, okay, that's what we expect to see, exactly how they were located in the array, over here, zero, one, and two, and also for any course that does not exist, it will be minus one, okay? So now let's execute this code here to make sure index of does work. Okay, you'll see zero, one, and two, and minus one. Okay, that's exactly what we expected. So now, how do we use this index of course as a helper method? for set marks and get marks. How do we do that, okay? So now I do want you to keep the old version there because the old version works, it's absolutely correct. But you should really know the both the clean version and the non-clean version, right? So now let's say for, let's say in the case of the get marks, what should we do? What I would do is I will simply just, com uh, you can slide the whole block and then control forward slash. I'm, I'm just copying this out. So leave that version there. You should really study that also. Okay, so now let me just give you a second version. Integer get marks string title. Okay, so now what we should do is we can now always, if I know that I should really somehow look for a particular course record with a matching title over here, I can always use the index of course helper method. Okay, so I can say the following. Integer, uh, let's say index. And then you can call index of course in the same, uh, or you can say this, that's okay, if you want to. Okay, this not index or uh, index of course. And then the same title over here. Of course, you don't just put EECS 2030, it doesn't make sense because if you say get marks 3311 
And then you actually give 2030. That doesn't make sense. So you should really give the same title as in the uh, parameter over there. Title. Okay, so now what should we do over here? What we should do is, so now index can be either minus one or something that's larger than or equal to zero. We know that in the case where it is minus one, that means, for example, 2011, that means the course does not exist. But in the case where it is larger than or equal to zero until NOC minus one, in that case, we know that the course does exist. Okay, so now we can distinguish between two cases. Okay, because if you simply just, let me tell you what can go wrong if you try that. Okay, that'll be some interesting case to see. Now, you might be thinking that why don't we simply say, now that we know where the course is, what about we simply say, return, uh, return this dot courses, which is an array at position index, which can be zero, one or two or minus one, right? And then we can say dot marks. This is a naive way of thinking. Why don't we try that and see what happened? Okay, why don't we try? Okay, so now you can see that, let's say, let's go back to the tester over here. I can tell you that I expect something to fail, something to fail. You can see that if we return, let's say the index happens to be zero for ECS 1022, that's okay. We can go to index zero. We can go to index one, we can go to index two. But what about if we pass a course title that does not exist, it's gonna return minus one can you go to minus one index of a particular array? No, right? Because remember, indices of array always start with zero. You can never have minus one as a valid index. So now, let's try that and then I'll make the comments for you. So now let's go to student tester. I would expect this line over here exactly to fail because we passed EECS 2011, which does not exist, in which case index of 2011 is going to give you uh, minus one. And then when you pass minus one over here, it's gonna fail, okay? So now let's go uh, go there and then try. But what kind of exception do we have? It's a new kind of exception you, you will see. It's, it's, called, it's called array index out of bound exceptions, okay? So let me write it down. It's called array index out of bounds. array index out of bounds exception is a very long name, but hopefully the name is informative enough. It simply tells you that if you pass an index that's not valid for the array you're uh, inquiring, in which case minus one is always an invalid index, okay? So now we can see that there's exactly line number 47 over here, exactly what I said before. The 2011 case is gonna give you uh, the, the error, why? Now, if you go to line number 76 of the student class, you can see that over here, when you say this dot courses an index, an index for 2011 will be, because 2011 does not exist, so you will be minus one. So if you pass minus one over here, it's gonna give you the index out of bound exception. Okay, so now, this solution does not work in the case where title has no matching course record objects A and A and array index out of bounds exception will occur. Okay. So, so far we have seen two exceptions that you should really know uh, very well from this tutorial. One is called null pointer exception. It's when you try to call a method or attributes on some null objects. And also array index out of bound exception, which is when you pass some integer to the array and the integer is either too large or too small. In this case, minus one is too small. Okay. So now, how can we fix this? The way to fix this is we gotta do some selection to say if the array index can be used, then we use it. Otherwise, we can signal some error. But for the sig uh, error sig signaling part, I will show you a little bit later, okay? So now we can say if index 
is larger than or equal to zero, in that case, that means it, it will start from zero, one, or two. It's not minus one in this case. Okay. In that case, we can say, uh, so let's uh, let's put it here. Integer marks. Let's say minus one. Okay. By default. So now in this case, you can say marks is assigned to uh, this dot courses is guaranteed to be valid, and then we can say index dot marks. Otherwise, course, uh, there is no matching course record objects title. Okay, in that case, we we'll simply let's say uh, it should be an error. Okay, which we'll do a little bit later. Okay, so for now, uh, you will simply just return box b minus one, of course, and then eventually we we'll just return minus one. Okay, that's what we will do. So now. What we should do now is uh, let's test this to make sure this still works. Okay, let's go back to the student tester over here and then run. So now we should not have the array index out of bound exceptions anymore. Okay, so now everything just worked as before. You can try and you can see that we still got uh, over here, we got box of E. Uh, this is not so good over here. Let's see what happened over here. So now we have get marks. Okay, let me have a quick look. So maybe there's something uh, I, I uh, omitted. Course is i, the title that equals title over here, index will be equal to i, and then return index. Okay, why don't I try? Because marks off, so here minus one is not really good. Okay, let's try that very quickly. Okay, I also want to debug quickly. Okay. Okay, so now marks off. So ECS 1022 should be there. Okay, it should be there. Okay, so now let me run a debugger just to check very quickly. Okay. Oops, I clicked on the wrong button. Sorry about that. I meant to do the debugger rather than this. Okay, let's not worry about that. Let me just uh, minimize that for now. Okay, let me just run the debugger again. Okay, so now we are here. I'm, uh, okay, let's step into it. Okay, let's see how exactly get marks will work. Okay, oh, actually I know, because we what we just changed was only the, oh, no, no, no. Okay, that's fine, that's fine. Okay, so now what's the index over here? This the index of course title EECS ten twenty two. Let's see what this will calculate. Okay. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. I already see that. Hopefully you see that too. Okay. You can see that rather than minus one, what we should do is we should say marks. Okay. That's a very silly mistake. Silly mistake I made. Okay. So now let's go back there to the student tester here, and then let's now launch. Okay, so now we do have the correct behavior over here. Okay, index off, and also uh, after setting the marks. So now you can see that what we have done. Okay, let me recap again. Sorry about the mistake. So now if you go back to the student class over here, you can see for the get marks, we simply don't repeat the for pattern anymore. We simply use this index of course helper method. And then we simply have to check to see if the index is either valid or not valid. And that's it. So now, what about, and then the external behavior is still the same. So that's the example of uh, refactoring. So what about set marks? We do something similar. Okay, let me just show that to you. What about set marks? So now rather than having this uh, loop here to be repeated, we can now say void set marks. String title and then integer new Okay, now, okay, so now what we can do is we can say integer index is assigned to this dot index, of course, title. You can see that every time if I want to really uh, run the same pattern of follow to find out the matching course record, I can always call this uh, helper method. Okay, and then what I would do is I can say if the index is larger than or equal to zero, that means I do have a course record that's matching 
In that case, I can say this dot courses at position index, that will be the matching course dot set marks to be new marks. Otherwise, it could be some error, which I'll handle later, which means you're trying to set the marks of some non existing course, which you can signal an error. I'll show you how you can do that uh, in later video. Okay, let's do a quick recap. So for this tutorial video, we are trying to show you basically uh, to see how you can create a new helper method, which will simply calculate exactly where the matching course is with the matching title, for example, 2030, in which case the index would be index one, okay? So once you define this helper method over here, make sure how to do that, you, you, you better actually understand how it works and try to define that by yourself as well. So once you have got this, you can, you can see that uh, for the get marks method over there, we can try to simply uh, use this line here to see where the index is uh, for the course, uh, for the matching course record, if any. In the case where the index return is larger than or equal to zero, that means the course exists that matches the title. And then in that case, we'll simply do whatever we like, and then otherwise we signal some error. And similarly, for another, for the other uh, method over here, so we uh, set marks, we just call the same first line over here. So we, again, we try to calculate where the matching course record is with the title. Okay. And then we try to see if the index, when the index is actually valid, in which case we'll do whatever we need to do. For example, in this case, to set the new marks, okay? Okay, hopefully that's clear enough. What I can do is I can also try to cut this and put that before the two uh, accessor and mutator methods, okay? So that's about what this tutorial is about. Okay, you should really try to understand how things work, especially about refactoring idea, and then see, see how you can do the index off, and also how you can use the index off to really redefine the set marks and get marks method.